it's important to point out that like you go from that <laughs> <laughs> to like being a an objectively successful. Res- Do you feel w- highly respected in Hollywood? No. How does it- <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Um, because like you guys won Golden Globes, you've been you got WGA awards, you've been nominated for Emmys. I've seen you on red carpets. I've snuck into parties with you after you've won <laughs> things, and it's it's I, I I've gotten the sense that you, it's sort of like you're living a lucid dream, except for some reminders, I guess, that <laughs> you're not in the most inner inner sanctum yet. No, I mean it's funny because it's like. You know, like, especially early on, the success was, like, it was, like, strange because, like, it came so, (laughs) so quick. It happened. It was, I I just want (laughs) to, if I could salute myself for just being a great stockholder. Yeah, I mean, you you know how to pick them. You, you, you can tell early like on. This, you're like, this kid's I'm, going I'm a, somewhere. I'm a, I'm a f***ing, yeah, I'm a GM. <laughs> a GM of friends. I'm Hollywood like, this GM. Guy, yeah, this guy. <laughs> There's a glint in his eye. His motor. He's an unstoppable motor. I've got all the intangibles you Wingspan. look for in a writer, in yes. a TV writer. But wait, you, you were saying, though, that, like, it happened immediately, which was how it felt to me watching it. And I was like, holy f***. <laughs> You know, I mean, the, the success like was was very early on, which was which made it like crazy. But I mean, now that we're past that, you know, like I've gotten to see like in the beginning, it's like wow, Atlanta, it's like the greatest show, and like it's awesome to like now I'm like. <laughs> People are like places like, man, that show Atlanta sucks. You know, like, <laughs> like I got to sit around long enough to like see the full like spectrum of it. We're like, man, who wrote this stupid episode? I'm like, man, that was I didn't feel that long ago. I was at a Golden Globe party dancing to Bad and Bougie. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it wasn't so long ago that you literally introduced Hollywood uh, to the Migos. To the Migos, you know, and now. No one cares anymore. Now everybody, I'm like, check out this Ice Spice chick. Everybody's like, shut up. <laughs> you <know? laughs> you watch comment it. sections turn. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's. But I mean, like, you know, I I just feel like. But hold on, you're making a <laughs> potentially. You're making a Lando movie. So on some level, like, but but. So explain how it is that both things can be true. Like, how is it that you're <laughs> doing the. Sh- that like is a dream, but also, you know, I, I feel like, you know, there's <laughs> is this a baloney situation. You're like, look, <laughs> well, my suite at the sh- at, at the Chateau Marmont, they didn't they didn't <laughs> fluff my pillow. Well, no, it's like, you know, now I'm now I know enough to be like there are pitfalls to all of this. You know, this like when Episode One of Star Wars came out. People were excited. I remember that. Like Prequels. as a kid. Yeah. You know, they were yeah. like, oh man, it's gonna be cool. And then it's like you see Jar Jar Binks and like people were upset. <laughs> it's know? like man. Like there's always room for people to be disappointed in. There you. was always room for <laughs> decades later a series of think pieces. <laughs> exactly. That only now reckon with the racialization of <laughs> the Gungans. <laughs> Are you ready? So by the way, that's and that's the part where like I actually do want to know how you and Donald on some level, like, because you guys are, something that I, I, I respect and fear for both of you guys <laughs> is that you, as much as anybody I know, you guys are attuned to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, both, both in ways that are, like, speaking to the creative sort of, like, fuel that you guys get from it. And also, like, the cynicism around how it works. But also that means that your antenna has to be way up for how this can be dangerous. <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, you know, like, the just the internet in general. Like like I said, I've gotten to see the— I've gotten to see the love and the hate several times in just different contexts, you know. I got to— What was your favorite <laughs> moment of Steve getting high off the internet? <laughs> I won't say this is my favorite moment, but just showing, like, the highs and lows. It's like, you know, in Hollywood, like, especially, it's like you're only as valuable as the last thing you did. And it's like, until you're, like, Martin Scorsese or something, like, everyone is like, this could be the last we ever hear from you. So, like, uh, Swarm, we just did Swarm. Yeah, and yeah, Swarm. Yeah. Didn't have a lot of fanfare, like, going into it, I don't think. I think 
a lot of people may not even have known it was going to come out at first. But then it like came out and it was like a big deal, a big hit. Everybody yes. was watching it. It was crazy. You right, know? inspired by the super fans of Beyonce. <laughs> inspired by the internet, yes. for sure. <laughs> yeah, and the hive, yes. Yeah, and it's like, uh, that was like a, a cool moment to like, just like, yeah, it was like, uh, I imagine being DMX, you know, in the 90s. Like you go outside and you're just hearing your album playing on the streets. It was like everywhere I went, there were people talking about Swarm. It was it was crazy, you know. But it was like, yeah, like just a reminder, like, oh, okay, like I I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not as terrible as everybody thinks I am, you know. Like maybe we still got something. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that that was just like a, a good like reminder of like, yeah, you know, on to the next thing, you know, and like you don't get too high or too low ever because it's all coming back around. So wait a minute, but I'm I, I what I'm registering from all of this is that like that your experience releasing Swarm and people having it resonate with them on some level made you think to yourself, I want to do something else that has some element of does it feel like this thing has risk with it? <laughs> well, I mean, everything everything has risk with it. And, and unless it's like, but like, look, I, swarm. It's like I'm gonna do a show about what it's like to be a uh, an unhinged, animalistic Beyonce <laughs> super fan, and then I'm gonna do a show or a movie about Star Wars Lando, which obviously Donald <laughs> had had portrayed Lando before. But like, the idea of like this is gonna be our thing. It feels like it's also daring the hive. <laughs> That you just <laughs> commemorated. Well, no, I mean, to then attack you. I think. I think that um, this is uh, not me trying to persuade you to not do this. By the way, uh, uh, I'm fine. just I'm curious. Not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I've already decided. <laughs> like this sounds like a dangerous idea, guys. You should have called me first. No, but I think you know everything that's worth doing. It has some risk to it, especially when you care about the quality of things. You know, I think that's like a big part of us is like we don't want to do things that are just going to be mediocre or just going to be like, yeah, they came and went or like that was fine enough. You no, know, you guys sort of take thing. swings. Exactly. So there's always going to be some risk. And with something like this, you know, there's going to be people who are going to who are really going to like judge you based Wait, on they, it. When they realize you guys made Lando white, yeah. it's going to be. <laughs> when they realize that Lando is, <laughs> everything has been run past the DNC first before <laughs> they get the script first. Woke Lando? Woke Lando. That's right. Like none of his, none of the stuff you saw in the other movies is canon. So Critical to, race theory Lando <laughs> is not going to play well on Reddit. <laughs> Yeah, no, people are, they're not going to like it. But, uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> I think it's just like, yeah, you know, I think a lot of people would probably be worried to do something like this because of the pressure of pissing off these fans, you know? But I think it's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> you're, like, you're, you're like Bane is what you're saying. I, I hear you, like, rounding <laughs> your way to, like, being born in the darkness. Exactly. It's like it, I was molded in Exactly. It. This is what I want. This is what I live for. You know, I want <laughs> I want to cause because that's the other thing too. It's like it's like Eli Manning to circle this back to, to football. <laughs> I have no idea how this is like Eli Manning. In let, me, any way. let me explain how this is like Eli <laughs> Manning. <laughs> Eli Manning comes into the NFL. He's supposed to go to the Chargers. He's like, nah, I want to go to New York. He comes to New York. He's like, so there's already that hanging over him. Then he comes in. People are like, man, you are nothing like Peyton. You got this look on your face. You, you know, you got this body language we don't like. Everybody's like, man, I don't know that this kid has it, you know? And then it's like he beats the Patriots, you know, on a crazy run with— Randy Moss and all, yes, and now the greatest it's like, team of all time. Exactly, Derp Face Peyton Manning. And now I'm sure Eli can walk into any bodega in New York and get a chopped cheese for free. You know, he's the man now. It's like most people do Absolutely. not want to step into that into that cauldron of 
the New York Giants quarterback position with, you know, <laughs> and for years people were like, this team is terrible. Like, you I know, just, it could have went the wrong I way. just like how you have Eli <laughs> going into a bodega. I guarantee Eli Manning is not walking. Into, I saw Eli Manning in the Hamptons. He could be. He could go. Into I saw the- Eli Manning. Dude, I was eating. I was eating lunch with David Samson, who works for Metal Lark. We're at, we're very stoned. We're eating lunch at like a dockside fancy restaurant in like the Hamptons, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in walks Eli Manning. And Eli Manning is like 6'5", like just tall, confident, perpetually dressed like he's at an Easter <laughs> function. Just like shorts, polo, just like the dude, the confidence that he has in any setting in the new, in the tri-state area. Exactly. That part is real. That's that's what I mean. He can go anywhere now. It doesn't matter what he did the other years of his career. It's like, that was enough. Like, this fan base that has chewed people up and spit them out a million times. Yeah. Uh, no, that's, by the way, that's, that's some of the <laughs> shit that I love about New York. Like, the mythology of New York that I do subscribe to. It's like... If you survive the media here and the spotlight here, that shit is real. We were talking about like the ways in which attention and spotlight can like <laughs> melt your brain. The yeah. people who have won, who made it to that highest level, Derek Jeter is like fascinating for this reason. Eli <laughs> too, they they escaped unscathed, which is well, the hardest like, thing. You it's like we did everything we could to try and break you, and you didn't break, so now you can be our friend, like, kind of thing. That's how New York operates. It's like, yeah, like, of course we were hazing you the whole time. <laughs> like, but but you passed, so now you're, now you're the guy, you know? But it's like, yeah, that's kind of how I feel like with, you know, doing something like Star Wars. It's like, <laughs> there's a... There's well, a, I get the metaphor yeah, now. See, yeah. now you're bringing it all home. It's like, you, you take that risk, it could end up badly, you know. You could end up like I'm trying to think of a New York Giants quarterback who flamed out. Let's. Who was the shittiest? Oh, Joe Pisarczyk. See, I Craig don't... Morton, <laughs> Scott Bruner. I think the point is being proven. <laughs> and we don't even know who these guys are. Correct. Like, uh, Correct. Yeah. Frank we... Filchuk. <sighs> no. He, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't. You don't. You don't remember <laughs> Frank Filchuk from 1946. <laughs> he had a 60.2 Q. I mean, you, don't, you don't have to go back that far to find a <laughs> Giants quarterback. I'm... No, Danny Cannell. Let's okay, go Danny Cannell go. from Danny 96, Cannell. 98. That's a, that's a yeah. good one.